Part of the reason is because of public school choice. Public school choice, PSC, was, is an initiative that was developed by the Board of Education. And the purpose of it is to improve student achievement in schools. And Central Region High School 13 falls under public school choice. A few years ago, the Board of Education said, wait a minute, we're not getting the increased student achievement that we want. So we want to send applications out there to people that may have an idea how to improve student achievement and bring other people into our schools and, and start some healthy competition and increase student achievement. Hence the public school choice initiative. And if you would like more information on public school choice, we have had a number of meetings, some of them here at Irving Middle School, that were developed and organized by the Public School Choice Office. You can go to LAUSD.net to the home page, and you can click on Offices, and under Offices, you can go to Public School Choice, and click on Public School Choice. When you go there, on the right, you'll see another place that you can click on Public School Choice 2.0. And you can read every application. You can read the history of Public School Choice. You can read every application. You can read the letters of intent that were put out for Central Region High School number 13. So originally, Central Region High School number 13 had 16 letters of intent. So 16 different groups wanted to write proposals to come into Central Region High School number 13. Many of them combined together, and in December, when proposals were due, we had six proposals submitted to the Board of Education. And of those six proposals, we anticipate five of the six applicant teams moving in as small schools in September 2011. The Board of Education will make a decision on March 15th. They postponed the decision, which they originally said would take place on February 22nd. They postponed it until March the 15th. Well, we had six applicant teams that wrote proposals. And I copied these applicant teams' names in the order in, in which they appear on the website. So I don't want you to think that because I copied any team for a second or third place, that's the place we put them in. No, we copied them directly from the Public School 2.0 website. The first applicant team we have is Alliance for College Ready Public Schools. They want a technology, math, and science charter high school on the campus. Many of you may be familiar with Alliance. They have a number of charter schools in the Los Angeles area, and they have a charter school at the Van Camp Bakery site. The next one, Los Angeles River School. Los Angeles River School is currently an SLC, a small learning community at Marshall High School. The teachers wrote the proposal, and they want to come over as what we call a pilot school. A pilot school means that there are teachers that are represented by UTLA. They are currently in classrooms teaching our students. But when they come over as a pilot school, they are allowed to do certain things that pilot schools can do. They have, they have um, power and control over their budget, over professional development, over the curriculum, over the scheduling, and the length of the year. And the pilot schools that wrote proposals to go into Central Region High School 13 expect more out of the teachers. Some of them it's additional tutoring after school. Some of them it's extra time before and after school. Some of them is they want the teachers to come in earlier in August for professional development. So we have four pilot schools. Los Angeles River Pilot School. We have the School of Technology, Business, and Education. That is currently an SLC at Marshall High School. Next one. Next one. We have Partnership to Uplift Communities. It's an LA Charter High School. You know that school, it's called PUP for short. They have a middle school on uh, Figueroa and they have a high school downtown. Cal's Middle School, Cal's High School. We also have the School of History and Dramatic Arts. They want to come over as a pilot school. They are currently a small learning community at Franklin High School. 
And our final applicant is called Art Lab. That stands for Arts and Community Empowerment. Again, another pilot school. This is currently a small learning community at Marshall High School, and the teachers want to come over to Central Region High School number 13 as a pilot school. Let's talk a little bit about the facilities. This, the school itself is divided up into five small schools with the same number of classrooms in each one of the small schools. The same number, the same size of the classroom. Some things may be different. One may have restrooms on the second floor. One may have restrooms on the third floor. But that's the only difference. Size of the classrooms, it's all identical. So it's every group occupies any of the five schools. The, the amount of room there is identical to each of the other schools. Each school has fully outfitted science labs. And I'll tell you, as a biology, chemistry, physiology, and science teacher, when I toured those chem labs and bio labs, I thought, wow, why didn't they have this when I first started teaching? It is an unbelievable facility. Then we have shared spaces. We have a shared cafeteria. One cafeteria with inside and outside dining. The outside dining, part of it is covered, part of it is open, and the covered part of the outside dining area is heated. Heated. A heated outside dining area. The inside dining area is part of the multi-purpose room. We have one multi-purpose room that includes a stage, and it is also the indoor dining area. Um, it's a state-of-the-art stage, has seating that folds into the wall, acoustics in there that are unbelievable. And, and when I had to buy furniture, because I knew that we would do indoor seating for cold winter days, very difficult to do that in such a beautiful facility, but our students needed places to get in and out of the weather. And uh, we were able to purchase tables that fold up and they can go against the wall. We have a library and two gyms. And in 40 years of education, I've been in education 40 years, this is my 41st year, I have never walked on a gym floor like the gym floor we have at Central Region High School 13. It has spring to it, it's actually suspended uh, wood floor. It's just unbelievable. We have a music, a band, dance, and drama room, and we just finished purchasing instruments for next year. Uh, football, you've heard about our football field. The football field is synthetic turf. Um, it really is about time that the district thought about synthetic turf as a former high school principal to see how much effort and work went into getting our artificial turf up and running for football season and to see it dead by the third or fourth game and to see how much water and effort went into that, we actually save money with synthetic turf. We have a synthetic tartan track around the turf. We have a soccer field that is, it is natural turf. We have outdoor basketball courts and outdoor handball courts. CTE science labs and greenhouse. What are we talking about, CTE labs? CTE stands for Career Technical Education. When I came on board with this project with Richard Alonzo, it was his idea and his vision, along with Jay Gonzalez in the Adult Ed Division, to build this CTE Health Career Tech Ed Lab on the site of Central Region High School 13. And the idea was to go to DWP, Army Corps of Engineers, Sanitation, and other agencies in the community and get them to come on board, use the lab, and hopefully donate some money towards getting the lab built so that our students could go see what an actual scientist does in a lab in a real life situation so our students could think about, hey, I could be that scientist. All I really have to do is apply myself in my classes. So, we, didn't, we weren't too successful in getting people to put money up until the Los Angeles Unified School District, the vision of adult education, came forward and said, you know what, we like this idea. Well, we like this idea if we can use this CTE lab for our parents. If we can train our parents in the lab on how to do things like be a lab tech. If we can use it after hours to train teachers on how to teach science classes better. And, and 
What can you do to really increase rigor and how can you hook students into science education? So they said they put up a million dollars and they wrote a grant to the state of California and the state of California funded us. And we will be one of the only high schools or the only high school in LA Unified with a career tech and science lab. And there are three labs there, not just one lab, three labs. One lab is a wet lab where students can analyze water. One lab is a dry lab where students can analyze soil. And one lab is an energy lab where students can look at alternate forms of energy, alternate sources of energy, like photovoltaic cells. Did you know that Orange County, one of the biggest industries in Orange County now, is solar panels? And we want to be able to train our students to be able to go out there and get jobs in that field. We also have a greenhouse. We have a greenhouse so that our students can learn how to grow native plants. Uh, why do we want that? Well, if you look around in Los Angeles now, you'll see that many homes are doing away with lawns, and they're putting in native species plants in there to conserve our water. And imagine if our students learn how to do that so they can go out and market themselves and come to your house and take your lawn out and put in native species plants. We also have what's called a bioswale. Now, what's a bioswale? A bioswale simply, simply means it's a hole in the ground. It's a hole in the ground that collects water. That's what it is. It collects any runoff water on site, any water from the sprinklers. When we have rain, it collects that water. And the architect and the contractors were so intrigued by the CTE lab that instead of building the bioswale according to what the original dimensions were, which were right along next to the CTE lab, they continued it the entire length of the parking lot as, a, as, a, as an increased barrier between the parking lot and the end of the property, so that any water on the site ends up in a bioswale. Now why is that important? It's important for a number of reasons. First, it doesn't go into the ocean, it doesn't go into the river, it goes into the ground. And our students will have an opportunity to test water after, after the rains, or after it runs off the field, to see what's in the water. Then it percolates down through the ground. It percolates down through the ground, and as it goes through the ground, the water is somewhat purified, and it adds to our water table. Therefore, adding to conservation efforts in Southern California. And I read recently after all the rains we had back there in December, and if we, we should have thought about having reservoirs to hold all that water because we had enough rainwater to last for a year. And what's going to happen by the time summertime rolls around? We'll be in a drought again. So we're going to give our students an opportunity to learn how to collect water, store water, test water. Athletics, this is a big question. What type of athletics program will we have at Central Beach 